Hello, Internet. Today we have a very long video. We're going to be trying to fix this massive um, finger licking 4090 from Asus that uh, was supposed to be tough um, as the uh, as this logo here suggests. Uh, but if we look a little close, we see a mother of all cracks. That's a mother of all cracks. Um, the father, probably a motherboard. Who knows? Um, so obviously, this thing is dead. And, um, and by the way, this came from Texas. So, shout out to Texas. <laughs> uh, the guy that sent it to me said everything's big in Texas. So, that kind of explains some of it. Uh, it explains why this crack is so massive. So we're going to get this thing taken apart to see what's going on. And um, <clears throat> I do apologize. I sound a little bit sick. That is because I am. So. Uh, I don't want to go into uh, fixing the crack first and then doing everything else because that wouldn't be smart the smart thing to do would be to fix everything else <clears throat> and by everything else I mean I want to look under the core because I have probably a hundred reasons to believe that that kind of damage had twisted the PCB to a point that we will have a very good number of pads ripped under the core. Um, okay, very... Um, interesting solution here so the shroud comes out while the the cooling block remains on the board for whatever reason that's supposed to be smart uh i mean like kinda why does this have to be dude this just the shroud itself is freaking heavy just a shroud let's let's weigh this sucker <clears throat> i'm gonna weigh this sucker one point nine pound kilo one point nine kilo just it's over a kilogram holy cow and then and then you got oh we're gonna get to that we're gonna get to that son of a gun we're going to get that heat sink out of the way and see if we can. Well, for one, it makes the assembly tricky. There we go. And so this thing here, this thing here weighs 2.65 kilo nice and so and then you also have the back plate and then the back plate probably another half a kilogram um, wait am I doing pounds or what am I doing grams oh i've been doing all all wrong okay so this is 150 gram 
Yeah, 150 gram on the on the on the back cover. 1.9 kilo on the heat sink. And 712 grams on the shroud. You guys do the math. I'm not Asian. I gotta pull out the calculator to add stuff up. And I don't really care. All I care is this thing is heavy. How does the board weigh? Oh, the board is only four, 314 grams. So this, <laughs> I mean, think about it, man. Just the size, the weight ratio, is, it, this is insane. How do they expect this to hold all that weight in that one little tiny corner? Oh man, I can feel like this thing is like, it feels bulge, man. There's, there's no way. Oh boy. I do not think this is repairable. I mean, it could be, who knows? It would be the biggest crack I've ever fixed if I get it fixed. So, I'm not gonna get to the crack just yet. I'm going to get the core out of the way. Um, I'll start with the memory see what the memory shows and if the memory shows a single ripped pad then I will remove the core though I should probably remove the core anyway because I got a feeling that this card is going to become a donor I just got this feeling that this card will be a donor and I gotta show something to the customer explaining my reasons behind it <clears throat> so that he don't feel too bad about sending it over to me and paying the repair attempt fee all right so We'll, uh, uh, should I, should I not? I probably should. I should probably lift the core. There's no need to uh, not do that. I have to be 100% sure. Because sometimes, see the thing is, the memory chips, they are not as large as the core. So if there's a flex on the, on the board itself, it's, it's most likely going to follow that flex to some degree uh, because of its size. But the core is a lot more rigid uh, and it covers a whole lot more surface area so that if the, if the flex happens here somewhere here, the rest of the chip will prevent it from, you know, following the, following the curve. It'll stay rock solid and then you're gonna end up having pads uh, ripped underneath so even though we might even if I lift the memory chip and it would seem like everything is fine I would still have to uh, lift the core to double check because with the crack like that there's no way and why do they make him so heavy anyway this is ridiculous <clears throat> this is ridiculous okay so I'm just gonna let this uh, warm up and uh, we'll get the core out of the way and see what's going on all right the thing is hot so let's turn on the air And let's get this thing out of there. Oh, I forgot to remove these stupid um, silicone corners, whatever. You got to get them off. Uh, but got to be careful because sometimes they flood. Let me show you. Sometimes they cover 
components around the board. See like this resistor here. Why is it so close? I have no idea. Okay, here we go. Eh, probably shield on the caps. Won't hurt anybody. Slowly warming it up. About 280 is where it's gonna start come off. In case you were wondering. Three times the boiling temperature almost. Come on, come on. All right, we got movement. We got movement. There we go. All right. So it looks like there are no ripped pads under the core, which is promising. What about the memory? Oh, memory looks good too. Huh. Surprise, surprise. Surprise indeed. Which means we probably gonna have to work on that crack. I was hoping I wouldn't have to. Oh well. Now a small incident just happened. You guys didn't see it on the camera. But I was, uh, as I was letting the core down, I don't know, my finger slipped or something? Never happened before. And so I ended up dropping the core down, though it landed on the, uh, the pad. Uh, but nonetheless, it was dropped maybe from an inch above. Uh, you would think, well, you know, what's wrong with dropping the core on the, f on the silicone mat from an inch height? The thing is that there are solder joints inside between the crystal and the substrate and if they were hot enough if the solder was still in a molten state or a liquid state and and I dropped it chances are there could be broken solder joints there could be internal shorts there could be all sorts of problems I will not know it until I put the core back on the board. So that's just uh, something that can happen. Never happened before. <clears throat> but it happened today because I'm filming. All that pressure from you watching me do stuff. Which is or normal. 
It means I'm not a lizard. It means I'm a human. Make human mistakes. By the way, I don't know if you guys care or not. This is the um, solder wick that I use. Um, pretty cheap. Uh, different size uh, width. Works pretty good. I got myself a bunch from China. Seems to be working pretty good. I like it. A lot cheaper than... Um, what do you call it? Super wick? Yeah, I've been using Super Wick for a long time. This is a lot cheaper. Um, and it's doing a pretty good job. It's not as fine as Super Wick. But, but it gets the job done pretty good. And uh, actually, I think that the super wick can sometimes be too fine. Uh, probably a good thing for like really, really small, tiny areas. Like iPhones or whatever. But for GPU repairs, this is probably fine. Cost versus performance is very much reasonable. Okay. If I don't clean this now, it's going to solidify to a point of a burnt sugar and it'll be impossible to get it off so I gotta get it off now while it's still hot that's one of the downsides of the NC559 or 995 what which one is it 559 I think anyway it's one of its downsides is that if you're if you're burning it it'll look like a burnt sugar and it will it'll be hard to uh, remove even if you do alcohol and whatnot so it's best to get rid of it while it's still hot as much as you can and if the board is already cooled down you could just add add some flux like me doing it here and it will mix with the solid one and it'll dissolve it and then you can wipe it off <coughs> <clears throat> you don't want to see any yellow pads all right that should be enough so 4090s in case you didn't know are not much different from a 3090 at the very least when it comes to Uh, the reball and the 3090 is not much different from a 3080 Ti at least when it comes to the reball and what do I mean by that is simply 
they're all using the exact same stencil. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure they do. Which is very convenient because you don't have to buy uh, any more stencils. And uh, even the memory chips, these uh, GDDR6X 2GB um, modules, same thing. Uh, the, the, the layout hasn't changed since the first GDDR6, which makes it very easy and convenient for repairs. You don't have to buy different stencils for anything, like back in the day, GDR3, 4, 5, 5X, they would all be different. But now, since the GDR6, they're all the same. 6, 6X, and uh, hopefully 7 in uh, 2030, or whenever it's going to come out. Hopefully it'll be the same. So that way we won't have to go and buy anything. <clears throat> now the core, on the other hand, given how little performance we get per each generation lately, it doesn't seem like it needs to get any bigger. I think they'll be able to squeeze the same amount of power from the exact same substrate. And then the crystal itself will be different obviously unless they go with the chiplet design which is going to be the end of the day for everybody because if they're going to start incorporating memory into the core we're all dead there'll be no more repairs because if the memory chip if the memory dies and the memory is part of the core the core is dead and that is the reason why there's so many dead uh, Vega 64s or any Vega cards that have um, memory chips part of the core or HBM whatever yeah you don't want that it'll give you an extra performance boost but at what price at the price of buying a new GPU after sneezing on it? No thank you. I would rather go with longevity, serviceability over any kind of performance boost. Especially considering how little that performance boost may be. I mean, it may, be, it may not be little, but it's still not twice faster you know because suddenly the, the repair cost is doubled if not tripled you know I don't know not too concerned about it to be honest because According to my statistics, memory uh, is not the number one reason why GPUs fail. My statistics may not be very extensive as to some other guys out there, uh, but for whatever reason, most of my repairs involve reball in the core. Even though at first it would seem like there's a memory problem. And then, you know, you lift the memory chip and it replaces it with another one. And it doesn't seem to make a difference. And then you reball the core and everything's fixed. I get that a lot. I don't know why. Maybe I'm so unlucky that I have to reball almost every core for almost every card I get. Don't know. Not the luckiest person in the world for sure. <coughs> but 
maybe you guys have different statistics. I don't know. Let me know. I wonder uh, what is the most common reason for a GPU to end up on your bench. Let me know. I would like to know. I guess it would really depend on the generation, on the brand. Like if it's AMD, it's probably some controller issues or MOSFET, you know, things like that. For NVIDIA, it's probably memory related. 30 series cards, probably uh, memory related. 20 series cards is probably more so because of all the micron issues. I don't know. All I'm saying is that most of the cards that I get, they're not, they are related to memory, but they're not memory issues. The memory chips themselves are fine most of the time. Uh, where is that? This guy. Yeah, I gotta get that guy too. Get it all prepared. <coughs> okay. So... Gonna put that in the bag, and get it out of the way for now. Because if the board is not salvageable, then I am wasting my time reballing the core. <coughs> so let's address the board. All right, there's a board. Let's clean that up a little more. I don't see any ripped pads, which is great. So we can go ahead and focus on the crack and that's gonna be a disaster. So might as well get prepared with everything we need to get this rolling probably several pads of absorbent material uh, what else I probably want to lift the board on an angle to help with the drain And before I even do that, well, no, I'm not going to power the board right now. If I power the board, it could be a disaster. I wanted to see if I could get voltage everywhere on the board, but it's but doing doing it now is not the smartest thing in the world. And uh, like that, so the board is a little bit on an angle as you can see see i got standoffs taller on this end than on this end so it kind of stays a little bit on the angle so that whatever whatever alcohol will be pouring on it will drain down it'll drain down and see like this it drains straight down. So, now let's activate the aggressive tip. And start drilling. We're going to start drilling this sucker. All right, there we go. Oh boy, that looks a lot more, a lot worse. 
Oh, man. Okay. So I'm going to have to take pictures like every step of the way. I don't think I have a board view for this card, but even if I did, I don't think I would have the one with layers on it. So I'm going to have to go in here and take a picture to see what's going on. And I'll probably be uh, taking a picture every layer or so. So that way I don't get disoriented. So let me go ahead and take a clear picture right there. Uh-huh, there we go. And we start drilling. And I want the air to evacuate all that alcohol vapor. And here we go. This does not look good. See all that movement? That is not good. Too much. 